So, hello everyone. I'm your instructor, Professor Miram, and this is uh, our astronomy course. Uh, we honestly were supposed to be meeting on campus, and because of the coronavirus, the uh, campus is closed. So, some parts of this course has changed, and what I'm going to try to do with this first segment of our class is uh, cover that. Uh, one of you emailed me this morning of like hey, some of these labs have outside observations that require mul uh, multiple days, and one of them, it literally expects months, and this is only a several week long course. So I'll talk about a little bit of how we're gonna do those labs that have the outside observations and what we're gonna do to work around that. So unless there are any immediate questions, I'm just gonna jump into my slides and just start going through my uh, intro material. So, I don't see any questions, so feel free to unmute yourself, ask, or uh, say something in the chat. I'll be looking at it periodically. I have one question. Okay. Um, so, we had to sign up for the class uh, as well as this class. And did they kind of combine the requirements for those, or because you said we're having labs in this class? Yes. So, so you're talking about you, you had to sign up for a lab time and then this class. Yeah. So so what happens basically is that because we cannot access uh, the uh, campus resources, we have to use that online kit that I messaged about a week ago. Okay, gotcha. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, first and foremost, I'm going to be flexible when it comes to getting labs in. Like I, I will have like these are the deadlines I'm setting um, that's in the syllabus can you guys see the syllabus yet or is that not available on blackboard yet I wasn't able to find it on blackboard yet okay so I'll make sure that's available today um, but like I'll, I'll have like a set of dates but uh, I'll just be blunt when it comes to how labs are gonna work my priority is to be as flexible as possible because these are weird times. All right. So let's go ahead and just dive in. All right, that's me again. All right, uh, my office, not too relevant because you're never going to see me in the office during this course. However, office hours, all right, that's going to be every Tuesday, Thursday from two to three. And obviously, during class time, we've got this. Uh, two two hour let's see it's basically hour and 15 hour so it's two and a half hour block every monday wednesday friday uh the way the lectures are going to work is that there are these online lectures already recorded and what i'll do during our regular class time is i'll be here on zoom and i'll say you guys should have watched up to this lecture at this point and i'll be available either to play play the video for you or like jump straight to where you have a question and just answer your questions directly. So I'll be available every day of the week. So definitely email me. I'm going to be very vigilant guys. I'm going to check my e emails basically every hour. Obviously if you email me at like 10 o'clock at night, I might be sleeping. <laughs> oh, I won't be asleep. You'll get emails from me late at night, but I might not answer when it's late. All right, course materials. Uh, my goal is to try and reduce costs uh, everywhere I can. So your textbook is an open source textbook. Does anyone have no experience with the digital textbook? All right, none, uh, no responses yet, that's good. So let's just, uh, let me click on this link and jump you over to where the textbook is. So you follow that link, you can also find on the course website and just dump, jive uh, right into the, the course. So let's go to table of contents and basically be covering this material as soon as it loads. All right. So this section was a wall of text. Let's go to one's a bit more interesting, a tour of the universe. Yeah. Stop trying to load this page. Ooh. 
There we go. So, obviously, we're going to have features like the highlighting, printing if you want to. Uh, close that down. So if you want to like, you can log in, create your own notes in your book as like a reminder. So I'm going to emphasize here, guys, like a lot of questions I get about astronomy is I don't understand blank. I don't, I don't get why this works. And my answer to you is going to be, have you watched the lectures? Have you read the book? This is a lot of content to digest. Uh, already in a regular semester, this would be centuries worth of material that we're breaking down in a few months. Now we're doing centuries worth of material in a few weeks. So what I'll tell you constantly is you need to be basically engorged in this, in this material. Got to read it again. Uh, watch my lectures. If, if my lectures aren't working for you, I'll recommend you to other resources. I'll point you to other either links you can read or videos you can watch and really want to be immersed in astronomy because there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, one tip that uh, I have found is helpful for a lot of students as they're trying to learn the material. Think of it like a vocab class. That's, that's a tip that a lot of my students have told them has worked effectively for them is we'll come up with this concept and they'll just make their note card and they'll say, you know, definition, you know, they'll write the term and it's definition in the back. And so a lot of students have told me that thinking of it kind of like a vocab course has been an effective trick to help them learn and memorize a lot of this material. All right. So obviously here's our textbook. Please read guys. And other link you're going to see a lot is this website. This is basically where we're going to go to find all the course material. Uh, when I'm done doing my little spiel today, I'm going to direct you immediately to go to the astronomy sections and do astro intro. So you'll go into section one. Uh, you'll have, when it's done loading here, you'll have all the videos. All right. I try to break them up so that no video is more than I think the longest I recorded was about 20 minutes. That was the longest segment I recorded. And just try to break them out into nice chunks to make it easier for you to consume. And all right, so I'll say you guys need to watch this one, the these four videos by the end of today or tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, we'll jump into section two and section three and start going through this. So I'll have a schedule of recommended videos and obviously, I'll be here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday to remind you where to where to be at. So I saw that you posted a quiz on Wednesday on section one. So section one is going to be all of those videos. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll answer about the, the quizzes because I have a whole list uh, posted by the end of the day. I'm still uh, compiling all the blackboard pieces together. All right. All right, so big one, how are you getting your grade? All right, I try and go for as uh, simple as possible. All, everything added together, there are 4,000 possible points, and that is split up between, so that's gonna be split up between your 10 labs, this attendance thing. The attendance is measured through those section quizzes that was just previously mentioned. And these quizzes are gonna be delivered through Blackboard, you guys, you have unlimited attempts. They're all multiple choice. They're just there so that I have some kind of tool to like track that you are following along the course. All right, that's all the section quizzes are for. All right. Homework, similar thing. It's going to be a resource online. I'll talk more about that in a later slide. And then your tests. You'll have three tests throughout the semester and then a final exam. I drop your lowest test grade. I, I don't do curves, like I don't care if everyone gets, gets an A, I don't care if everyone gets an F, doesn't matter to me, there are no curves, you, you get the grade you earn. But to emphasize, three tests throughout the semester, the lowest one will just get dropped, doesn't count. And then we'll have a cumulative final exam at the end. All right. 
So biggest change for this semester, we're going to have to do these, uh, these kits, these online lab kits, right? The full instructions go to the website, go to the labs portion, and you'll hit uh, bullet by bullet instructions on how to acquire your kit. Yes, they're about $100. I'm sorry. Uh, unfortunate circumstances. Um, if you haven't ordered your kit yet, uh, the first two labs, you should be able to do without the kits. It's definitely more into the later labs you'll need them. And there'll be tools like mirrors, uh, protractor, bits of string. And so a common question I get is, can I get through these labs without purchasing the kit? And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you could. You could be able to find your own substitutes with the supplies you have lying around your own household. So I do make sure there is a link, once again, on the, the web page. It'll be something like lab-materials PDF. And that straight up tells you exactly line by line what what tools you need for this lab, and the the one that most students wouldn't have is like a prism for shining a light through the prism and splitting the colors of light. So if you feel like you can get by by ordering just the few materials that you don't have yourself, uh, feel free to. I'm not making this requirement that you must buy this exact kit. I'm just saying this kit will have everything you need for these labs, All right? So continuing on, um, one common, another issue that's commonly come up is students will email me saying, hey, professor, I can't find the kit. You go to the eScience Labs website, you have to make an account first, then search for the kit. That's, that's their procedure, All right? So, uh, obviously, we are an astronomy course. We want to try and make sure there are some observations. And uh, specifically, there would be two labs, labs three and five, that need to do outside observations. Uh, you guys can ignore this rule, this uh, two or more zero things. We're not applying that rule because it's a summer semester and all the weird changes. So, this rule doesn't apply, you guys. Just ignore that. All right, outside observations, specifically labs three and five. Here's what we're gonna do is lab three says, take a picture outside, make a, make a drawing of what your outside view is like over a span of three months. And obviously we don't have three months to do this course. So first thing we're gonna use is this, cool, is this tool called In the Sky, and this is an online planetarium, so. I've already got this open up on another page here. So we're gonna use this tool. And this is awesome tool, I absolutely love this. And we're gonna use this to try and substitute some, some of what your outside observation is gonna be. I'm gonna ask that you do your best to try and get at least one picture, even if it's just outside your, outside your room, one picture of the night sky, no matter how clunky the view is. Just so I can try and see what stars you guys are able to get out. But as I'll turn, we're going to switch to this program. And pretty simple. What you do is you can set your latitude and longitude. When you go to the website, it tries to automatically pull based on your IP address, your location. But you can manually set it. I've set this one to ODU's campus. right? And you can jump to any day, any time, and this will show you what the night sky is gonna look like. So let's, I'm gonna jump this to, let's see here, let's say six o'clock, which will be at 12, about 14, 1400. So I've changed the time of day, and now I can just change my view. Let's say I wanna look easterly, right? I wanna look easterly, and I'm just gonna let it play. I'll do it at like an accelerated time. So these are the tricks that we're gonna use to try and simulate the outside observations. Cause I know everyone doesn't have a clear view through of the skies or even has the ability to go outside and see a clear view. All right, go ahead and pause this. Now you might have noticed 
There's a lot of information on here. One of the labs is about tracking sunset, so our sunrise, right? So there's a lot of features here. Let's go to this. Display. I'm going to turn off deep sky. Notice how there are some stars that just go away. Right. I'll leave the planets on. Well, let's keep the stars on, but let's turn off the constellations. So I'm manipulating what views, what the view is going to be like in this in this program. And then I want to make it very easy for me to find the sun. So I'm going to turn on what's called the ecliptic. You'll hear more about the ecliptic in a lecture on Wednesday. But you see the line that just came on? I'll, I'll toggle it off. Back on. There's that ecliptic. Right? If I follow the ecliptic, I should be able to find the sun eventually. Venus. There's our sun. Let's turn that off. All right. So one of these labs is going to be about tracking sunrise, sunset. Well, I now see the sun. Here, I'll turn off all the other stars to make it easier. Come on. Don't need the names. There. Now, for whatever reason, our sun is labeled in with the planets. Oh, well, that's, that's the thing that this program went with. But there's our sun. And now I'm just going to let the video play. I'll do it in Accelerate. And watch the clock. And we can use that to say, hey, when is the sun set? We're going to use tools like this to help us map the night sky. All right, homework. Changing things up a little bit. I used to use another service and decided that, hey, I already threw an unexpected fee at you guys, so. Let's try and cut that out. And so what I'm doing for this summer semester is recreating all my homework in basically a, this Google form, all right? And so you'll see me periodically post these homeworks. I'm gonna, try, my goal is to have the homeworks of the entire semester up by the end of this week. Honestly, homework one and two will be up by the end of the day for those of you who want to start getting ahead. But I'm just gonna get all the homework posted through these forms and what you'll do is follow the links and go do the homework and uh, you'll have unlimited attempts uh, and this is going to be a bit of a an experiment to see how this homework works for you guys because like I said I've switched platforms and I want to go to something that's 100 percent free because I want to reduce on the costs that you guys have to incur. So I'll be posting those links uh, uh, regularly. My goal is to have the entire semester's worth of homework up by the end of this week. It'll probably bleed into next week is my goal. So check the syllabus, check the website for the due dates. Uh, my policy, you can submit the homework late. I will right, have due dates with all the homework. If it's submitted late, it's just an automatic flat 20% penalty. And you can do the homework as late as June 25th. I believe it's the Wednesday of the last week of classes. All right. All right. Tess, take a screenshot now. If you use a calendar app or a notebook, write these into your tools now. All right, Tess, we'll have our first one fr Friday, May 29th. This is a fast paced course. Second one will be Monday, June 8th. Friday, June 19th is our third. And our final exam will be last day of classes and it's a cumulative final. So put this into your calendar, choose whatever tools you need to keep track of these dates. I'll, I'll send you reminders as they come up. And how the tests are gonna work is they'll be open for a 24 hour period. And you can take the tests at any time within that 24 hour window. Right. So any questions about the test material? Oh, 
All right, I'm just pulling up the chat. All right, so I did see a question about uh, the lab Blackboard. I don't know if that's gonna work. So no, the lab Blackboard page uh, will probably not be open this semester and your lab grades will all be done through this main lecture's Blackboard page. So, um, let's see here. No questions are coming in yet. I'm looking at the chat. Uh, any questions about the course structure at all? Because the rest of this is going to be me doing a math review. So, I'm just making sure that, so we don't have to worry about the time constraints of the lab course. We just have to worry about this course. We're, yes. Uh, okay. I'm going to set due dates for the labs, but those are not going to be hard deadlines just because of how chaotic things have gotten. Uh, I do have a hard deadline by the end. I think it's the same thing, the June 25th or something like that. That'll be like a hard deadline. But uh, uh, when we'll see the due dates and where. Uh, they're in the syllabus, uh, which I apparently have not made available to you guys uh, yet. Uh, I'll do that when I'm done lecturing here. And uh, there'll be there'll be links in the Blackboard page when I finish setting it up that you'll see all that. So I'll send out an announcement uh, once I've gotten all that set up correctly and remind everyone. So that'll def you'll definitely know that by the end of the day. How do you pronounce your name again? Nero. All right. So, so enough about uh, the structure of this class. Uh, now my job is to, as many students have told me in the past, scare you for some reason. I'm going to do a math review. All right. So uh, from my experience in these next few slides, I'm going to cover with you guys. A lot of students walk away getting terrified this is a math class. No, this is not a math class. This is an astronomy course, but mathematics is unavoidable. You need to be able to do some calculations because we're going to talk about a lot of weird numbers and try and process them. So I have found that this, this intro lecture here is like the best time for me to just try and do a catch all. And I'm going to go over a lot of the different algebraic manipulation, specifically manipulating powers of 10. That's a big theme in astronomy, dealing with large order magnitude numbers and just playing those numbers so that we can get something meaningful for our brains. So I'm gonna use this to just practice, go over some of these things. I don't expect you guys to be experts and manipulate these, these values as quickly as I do, but I want you to see it so that when it does come up later in the semester, it's not just a surprise. A uh, great example of this, you're gonna have a problem uh, near the end of the course that's gonna be calculate the mass of the rings of Saturn. So tricks that I'm gonna show you today, they're gonna come up when you do that problem later in the semester. All right, so that, let's dive into our math review. What I've got here is just a simple word problem. I ask, how much mass of carbon do I have? And it's easy. I say it's 600,000 billion billion atoms of carbon. And one carbon atom has a mass of 20 billion billion billionths of a kilogram. And I hope it's obvious where I'm going with this. Our language is insufficient for communicating numbers. So this is why we introduce our mathematics. And I'll say, look, the total mass how much mass of carbon do I have is going to be the number of atoms times the mass of one carbon atom. So let's convert these words into numbers. Straightforward, right? Right. Here is 600,000 billion billion atoms and 20 billion 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 billionths of a kilogram. All right. Even our numbers aren't exactly clear cut. So we introduce scientific notation. Right? Use the notation to reduce the powers of 10. So we'll say how many atoms? Six 
10 to the 23rd. What's the mass of one atom? To 10 to the minus 26, All right? Six times two, you guys know that, that's 12. And we have these powers of 10. Well, 10 to the 23rd, 10 to the minus 26. We can stitch those together. So I'm just going to move the products around. Always, always keep your units, All right? There is an inherent level of physics that has to be with us and we need units for numbers to have any physical significance. All right, so six times two is 12, 10 to the 23rd, 10 to the minus 26. The exponents will subtract, All right? 23rd minus 26, you get 10 to the minus third kilograms. All right, 10 to the minus third kilograms, well, that's grams. So all of this language here was to say that I have about 12 grams of carbon, which if any of you are using a pencil right now, a little more than the lead in your pencil right now. That's how many grams of carbon that I set up with this example here. All right. So let's do some more, all right? Let's try some multiplication, all right? This is just, like I said, practice so that uh, you, you can see this one more time. So I'll rearrange the variables, right? Get the three times two isolated and get the factors of 10 off to the right. So 10 to the fourth, 10 to the third, those add up. Six times 10 to the seventh, 60 million. All right, divide, right? Same set of numbers, but now we're gonna do division. And there's a lot of different ways to go about doing this. Yell at me if I've gone too fast, right? So I did here, as I said, look, three to the fourth, two to the third. Isolate the three over two, right? So I've got three halves here, four over three. That means I subtract the three from the four. Four minus three is one. So I say this is 10 to the one-th power. Now the way my brain went about just completing this, three times 10 is 30. What's half of 30? 15. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is that we don't need calculators to do these crunching for us, especially when we have just the factors of 10. We can do that. That's usually just addition or subtraction. And so we want to be able to use, you know, our calculators to check ourselves, obviously, but we want to be able to say, am I confident in these values I'm reporting? Calculator is useless if you don't understand how to manipulate the numbers. Calculator will just take garbage data in, spit out garbage data. How many of you have had those homework assignments where you go click, 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 get the number, plug in the program, the program says you're wrong, and then you go through click, 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 click again, get a different number and try that, all right? I saw one head nod, so I'm, I, I reached someone here, all right? So the, once again, the goal is just to practice this, all right? Let's do a difficult one, all right? This is probably the most complex level of math that you'll have to encounter in this course, all right? So here I'll have addition, or I'll have numbers with different powers of 10 that I'm trying to add together. So what am I going to do is get them to have a common power of 10. 10 to the fourth, well, I can just write that as 10 times 10 to the third. So this 10 times 10 to the third is this fourth. Here, let's go back a so. All right. So what I'm doing is making this number have the same power of 10 as this number, 10 to the third. All right, they both have 10 to the thirds. All right, 2.04 times 10 is 20.4. So everyone's got the same factor of 10 on them, so I can factor out the 10 and just add the numbers together. So pull the 10 to the thirds off to the right, 20.4 plus 1.5, stitch them together, 20.9 times 10 to the third. All right, 
a common type of error. As always, it deals with fractions. Let's do this one. It's 26 five by 65. No calculators. Right. Well, what's half of 26? 13. 13. Right. I see an even number and I can always take half of it. So I know how to break up this. I can say this is two times 13. 65. That's a little bit trickier. What's six times 10? 60. So I need another six. Uh, but I got this weird 13. So I can manipulate ways of factoring these things. Instead of doing six times 11, turns out I can write this five times 13. How, how can you convince yourselves quickly to do that? Five times 10, 50. Five times 11, 55. Five times 12, 60. Five times 13, 65. All right. Start with the numbers you're familiar with and just increment your way up there. And now obviously I've written this in such a way that it's trivial. The 13's cancel and I get the, the correct mathematical number, the two fifths. Here's the reason why I bring this one up, guys. This has come up in, in a class once, and it was basically worked on this 26 by 65. And what did the smart student do? They canceled the sixes and magically, luckily, got the correct answer. So, completely wrong. This makes no sense, but they magically got a correct answer. And I had a tough time trying to argue with the student of just because your boneheaded error worked out doesn't mean that you did anything correctly. And this kind of issue I see all the time. So double check your work, be careful. Um, don't rely on the calculator. Like, like I said, use the calculator to get your final answers, but have some like pen and paper lying around and write things out. That's a great way to avoid errors. And making mistakes is totally reasonable. All right, that's part of just doing math is you, you catch an error, you make a mistake, you correct it, and you move on. Like, that's perfectly natural. All right. So here's a crazy complex one. I've got an eight times 10 to the 10 to the 24th, so I buy a four times 10, 10 to the 20th, times 0.5 times 10 to the minus third. And I will argue here that we don't need a calculator to do this at all. We'll work through this together, all right? How do I reduce this crazy thing into one of these answers? So I'll show you my way. Right. Always, always rewrite the numbers. Right. And start doing some different uh, simplifications. Uh, your brain might see some uh, steps that, uh, that I don't follow, and that's totally fine. All routes will lead to the same answer. So here's what I did I said, look, 10 to the 24th over 10 to the 20th, that's a subtraction. Right. Get those numbers subtracting each other. 0 0.5, I don't want to do a decimals yet, so I'm going to write that as a fraction, one half. Right. Now I'll start grouping powers of 10 here. Right. I've got one half here. Let's stitch it over and multiply the four. So this will be eight divided by four times two. I know a lot of you are already doing the jumping to the one, but bear with me. I'm doing this grossly long so that hopefully no one gets lost. What happened to these tens? Well, 1,024 minus 1,020 is 10 to the fourth. So I've got myself at 10 to the fourth times this remaining 10 to the minus third. All right. So four, to, four times two is eight. I've got eight divided by eight. Group those powers of 10. 10 times four minus three. I get one times 10 to the first power. Or a nice simple. This crazy jumbled mess is just 
a fancy way of saying 10. All right, let me reiterate guys, I'm only doing this level of math review because problems of this caliber can come up, especially in the later sections. This can come up. Uh, this will not be the entire course. This isn't even the bulk of the course. Please don't be intimidated as if you signed up for this uh, math class. You have it. This is astronomy. We will get into astronomy soon. But like I, like I said, repeating myself, I want to cover this mathematical stuff so that it doesn't shock you when it does come up. Another tool that we're going to be constantly using throughout this course is this concept of proportionality. All right, and I've got a couple of word problems or word ways to say this. Let's say you're going 60 miles per hour and you drive for one hour. Well, you're traveling 60 miles per hour, you drove one hour, you just traveled 60 miles. If you drive for two hours, you went 120 miles. So this concept of proportionality would say is look, the distance you traveled, how far, the distance you traveled, right, the similar, that's a proportionality. It's proportional to how long you've been traveling. Right? If any of you have, it, say, a commute to work, let's say, awkward times now, let's, <laughs> before these lockdowns, how many of you thought of your commute as being like, it takes me 15 minutes? to get to the grocery store. It takes me a half hour to drive to this destination. How many of you thought about it as, well, it's about 15 miles to get there, and that's good. No, most of us, <laughs> we take the shortcut. We don't think of the distance we're gonna travel. We think of how much time it takes us to get there. So we're using this proportionality trick. We're making this logical shortcut. And we can do things similarly in that direction. Let's say I traveled 20 miles and I was going 30 miles per hour. Well, then that trip took me 40 minutes. Let's say I got to travel the same distance, but I was able to go twice as fast. So imagine in the second case, traffic was clear. In the first case, you're at peak traffic. Uh, if any of you have ever commuted through the tunnels, Right. You know that tunnel traffic can have these peaks where traffic literally stops in the road. Right. That's what I'm trying to get at. Same distance, different speeds, different times. So this relationship we'd say is the time of your traveling is inversely proportional to how fast you went. The faster you move, the shorter the time. Right. So we're going to be using these kind of proportionality relationships frequently to discuss not just distances, scales in the universe, but radiant energies, how hot something is, how luminous it might be. We're gonna be discussing planets and orbits constantly, so we're gonna to need to remember some of our circle and sphere geometries. Start with the circle, right? What's the area of the circle? Well, it's pi times the square of its radius. That circumference. The circumference says, what's the distance? When you think of circumference for astronomy, think of orbits. How, how far does Earth travel when it goes around the sun? Right? Well, if you can make the orbit a nice perfect circle, it's two times pi times the radius, two pi r. We'll be asking things about what's the density of these different planets. Look at these moons, right? They're gonna be spherical objects. What are they composed of? Well, if we can calculate its volume and its mass, we can start to calculate things like what it's composed of. So if I have a sphere of some radius r, its volume, four thirds pi r cubed, its area, right? Uh, you ever struggle thinking about volume area? Volume, take a paint bucket and think about how much paint you can fill into that bucket. Area is how much area, how much uh, wall can you paint, right? And so our area of a sphere, four pi r squared. Now before anyone asks, 
No, these are not things that you must have internally memorized. You can always look these up. But like I said, keep this in the back of your mind when it comes up. Another one that will come for us, the logarithms, right? We've talked about how you have 10 raised to the power. Well, you can do the opposite. You could have four raised to the power. What the heck's a logarithm? Logarithm is the opposite of exponentiation. Instead of me exponentiating to make something big, I take the logarithm to make it small. And here's just uh, you know your classic algebraic example of what is x? 10 equals 4 the x. Well, I'll take that logarithm base 4, logarithm base 4, and that reduces to x is whatever this number is. We're not going to see calculations like this in this course, but we are going to see things that are called log plots. Right? We're going to see plots where we're taking these huge range of scales and using logarithms to reduce them. Why do we do that? Well, simple trick, right? If you remember your log rules, right? So let's say I have quantities x times y times z, so on and so forth. Well, instead of doing a bunch of multiplications, if I can take the logarithm, I can just add these numbers up now. Instead of trying to figure out what's 5 times 60 times 12.5, I can just say, what's the log of all those numbers added up? So for some historical context, the, the logarithm tool, it was literally invented by astronomers because they had this difficulty of trying to track positions of stars track, they're trying to estimate distances. And so they invented the logarithm tool to help them reduce the complex multiplications, exponentials they were doing. They just wanted to make their lives easier. So they came up with this tool. All right. So this is the end of my little intro spiel. So let's just do some reminders. Read your book, guys. It's, it's an open source book. You know, make an account with the OpenStack resources, add notes to your book or good old pen and paper, jot stuff down, right? If you want to, you really want to learn something, you got to write it down. All right, uh, practice problems. Uh, remember that tip I gave early on. Think of this kind of like a vocab class. Write down a concept. Use your note cards. They're very powerful tools. And when the mathematics come up, don't be afraid. Don't just entirely rely on your calculators. Like I said, calculators are powerful tools, but you need to know how to manipulate the numbers yourselves too. Study. Read the books, guys. They're useful. If you want to understand your strongest concept, the book is going to have a different way of phrasing things than I do, and that might help you. And if the book and my lectures don't help you, seek out. Email me a question, and I'll point you to resources that will help you. Astronomy is this amazing subject, and there are literally thousands of thousands of different resources out there to help you. So. Like I said, if you ever find yourself struggling, reach out to me and I will do everything in my power to help you because I think everyone should learn this stuff because I think astronomy is great. So, all right, so that's the end of my spiel for this first half of this course. And I'm starting to see questions come in, so let's just start answering those questions. All right, where do we submit the lab assignments? Uh, all right, so Lily, I'm gonna answer your first question, where you submit them. I will be making a, a section on the Blackboard page that says like a uh, lab assignment uploads. And so uh, you'll see that later today, right, this uh, entire section of the Blackboard page for uploading them. Now, as for, I try to edit some of the lab assignments and it won't let me type on them. Um, That sounds like, so there, there are two documents uh, for every lab on the web page. One of them is a PDF that is uh, your uh, precursor and the, uh, 
introduction to the lab concepts, bunch of material that goes with it. And then I'll have like the instructions. And there should also be a Word document associated with that PDF file. And the Word document is the one you download and that's the one you should be able to type on. Um, uh, if you have access to a printer and you prefer to print off these materials, handwrite them and scan it, fine with me. Uh, scanning or typing into the Word document, uh, either answer is fine with me. More questions, keep them coming. All right. So, um, it'll be a little bit of both. The test will have some multiple choice and some short essays you will see some practice tests. Uh, uh, you'll see a section uh, posted uh, tonight. And it'll be like, here's some practice tests and you'll, you'll see what the format's gonna be like for those tests. Uh, I'm going to direct everyone, go to the website, All right. All right. Uh, you should be able to find the link directly on the Blackboard page right now, it should be like in the banner section. Uh, if we want, can watch and finish some of the quizzes once we see them? Absolutely. Uh, my goal is to have basically the whole course posted uh, by the end of this week and uh, you can go at them at your pace. So go to the main website, uh, I'll direct everyone uh, by the end of today or end of tomorrow. Here's your section one videos, what is astronomy? And uh, what this one's got four parts for you to watch. All right. All right, so that seems to be the end of questions. So I'm gonna end the recording here. I'll post this video online for those uh, for the students who weren't here. Um, I guess that didn't come up. Uh, this is an asynchronous course now. So I'll be available at our lecture times and I'll remind you, watch this section so-and-so or be here to answer your questions and uh, I can't have an expectation everyone meets at this exact time because I, I want to accommodate everyone as best I can. So like I said, I'll be here at these times. I'll clearly communicate with you and uh, try and make things available as easily as possible. And I feel like I heard someone start to chat up. Uh, all right. So let's end the recording there.